Chapter 6 Disputes in the Courts Judging the World and Angels 6 1 8 Do not take your brother to court before the unjust. Be able to judge. 6 9 11 We have been washed, sanctified, and justified. 6 12 18 Our bodies belong to the Lord. We are in spiritual union with Him. 6 19 20 Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. 6 1 Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust, and not before the saints? 2 D Not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? 3 Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Paul uses questions to make them think and his points easy to understand. Do you not understand how hazardous and dangerous it is to ask unbelievers instead of believers to judge between you? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? The church is to judge the world pertaining to this life. He asks, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters among yourself? We are supposed to know what is going on in the world, but we are not to get entangled by it and conformed, but transformed by his word. Our goal is to keep single-eyed on what God wants to accomplish, 1 Tim 2 colon 4, and not to be distracted by the world. Paul asks, are you not able to judge the little disputes among yourselves? People today often use lawsuits as a get-rich scheme. Paul is not saying that there is anything wrong with the courts of law, but that unsaved judges do not have the ability to decide spiritual matters. The church members in Corinth were ruining their testimony and disgracing the name of the Lord by going to public courts. Do you not know that you will judge, rule, holy angels when we are in heaven? How much more things that pertain to this life? God will judge all lost people and angels, 513. Man was made a little lower than the angels, but because Christ is in us we will be elevated above them, Heb. 2 colon 7-10 this realization should make worldly disputes seem less important. For if then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. If you have disputes pertaining to this life, set those to judge who respect and follow Paul. Chloe in 1.11 and those in 16.17 Which you seem to esteem less than the 10,000 instructors. 5. I speak to your shame. Is it so, that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren? Paul said, How shameful, is there not one wise enough among you to judge between the church members? 6. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. You are suing each other in front of unbelievers. 7. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? They think and act wrong. Defraud means taking something that rightfully belongs to someone else without consent. It is better to let ourselves be defrauded than to bring lawsuits in public courts before unbelievers. Forget the wrong things people do to you, let them go. Too many Christians get wrapped up and consumed trying to protect their rights and get a little money from other Christians which takes away from serving God. 8 Nay, ye do wrong, and defraud, and that your brethren. You are using the law to steal from your fellow believers. You can take an unbeliever to court but not a believer. You are brethren, so love one another. We should not insist on having our rights. Show love to one another, we are family. Gal. 6.10 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, ten nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Paul says, Do you not know that the unrighteous, unjustified, will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived into thinking that the judges you are going to will inherit the kingdom of God. 
Neither fornicators sin against self, nor idolaters sin against God, nor adulterers sin against their spouse, nor effeminate, mew wanting to be women is a sin against nature, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, sin of sodomy, nor thieves, through litigation, nor drunkards, no control, nor revilers, insult the truth, nor extortioners, blackmailers, shall inherit the kingdom of God. The earth will be the command center from where Jesus Christ will rule his kingdom, heaven and earth. In a dream, Jacob saw a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it, Genesis 28 verse 12. The Lord God at the top of the ladder, in heaven, told. Jacob that he would keep the Abrahamic covenant with him. Jesus told Nathanael that truly, truly, he would see the angels carrying out orders to heaven from the earth. Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. John 1 verse 51 His throne will be on Zion in heaven and a counterpart in Shaun on earth. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Psalms 48 verse 2 Jesus said, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, Matt. 5 34, 35 The angels are ministers for them who shall be heirs of salvation, Heb. 1 14, in heaven and on earth. The holy angels that live in heaven have free will and can still sin and we will make sure they will not. 11 And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. God is willing to save any sinner. Some of you were like that, but those listed, but that is not who you are now that you believe, but you are washed, but you are set apart, 1 colon 2, 30, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by having received his righteousness, the Spirit of our God, Rom. 3.22.26 12 All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Paul has liberty to do all things, but all things are not profitable to hasten to advance God's purposes. Nothing is prohibited, but Paul is not going to allow himself to be ruled by his appetites and be brought under control of unwise, useless materialistic things. Paul is not going to take people to public court. God believes in us. He shows us grace. God is confident that by treating us as adult sons of God and lovingly allowing us free will to decide, that we will choose to serve him and do right. God knows that love is the best motivator, 2 Cor. 5.14 13 meats for the belly, and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. The physical mortal body that God will destroy is not for gluttony or fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord, His Spirit, is for the body. Our bodies are to be instruments of righteousness for His service in this life and in eternity, Rom. 618, 12 colon 1, 1 Tim. 4 colon 8. 14 And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. God will raise us up in new bodies by his power just like he did the Lord. 15 Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ, and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. We are in spiritual union with Christ. Shall I then take Christ's body and join it to a harlot, not wife? Absolutely not. Paul wants all fornicators to understand how evil it is to join their spirit, soul, and body to a prostitute. 16 what? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. What? Do you not know that he who has physical relations with a harlot is one flesh? 17 But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. The believer's spirit is joined to the Lord's spirit and made one spirit upon salvation. Marriage is a picture of Christ and the church in both mystery and prophecy. For we are members of his, Christ's, body, of his flesh, and of his bones.
For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. F. 5.30, 31, Genesis 2 verse 24. 18. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Run from fornication. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he that commits fornication sins against his own body. 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? What will you desecrate his temple? Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you believers, and you do not belong to yourselves? The tabernacle was covered with skin. 20 For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. You were bought with a price, the Son's own blood. So then, glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are paid for and belong to God. Rom. 12 colon 1, 2 The Three Circles Mankind is made up of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, body, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, spirit, and man became a living soul, Genesis 2 verse 7, Job 27 verse 3. God works from the inside out, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord, 1 Thess. 523. What happens when a person is saved in our spirit, soul, and body? At salvation, five things happen. To describe these, we can use the acrostic cribs, circumcised spiritually, Colossians 2 verses 11 and 12, regenerated, Titus 3 verse 5, indwelt by God, Colossians 1 verse 27, baptized, or placed, into Christ, 1 Cor. 12 13, and sealed with the Holy Spirit, F. 113. Satan works from the outside in. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, body, sensual, soul, devilish, mind. James 3 verse 15. Before salvation, the mind of man is devilish when it is connected with the spirit of this world. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Ephesians 2 verses 1 and 2 God has set us free from being ruled by the sinful flesh. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Ephesians 4 verses 17 to 19 Every decision, choice, we make is a spiritual decision. Satan could not see that God breathed into Adam a spirit and a soul, Genesis 2 verse 7. Elihu told Job, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding, Job 32 verse 8. Our emotions think the things in our minds are real, this is the reason a movie makes us cry. Our emotions are governed by the mind and react to circumstances. Our flesh, body of sin, is the default position if we don't walk by faith in God's word. We must understand the word by the spirit of our mind and believe it in our heart, 1 Thess. 2.13 The doctrine makes us grow up in Christ, Rom. 6.17, 8.29, Gal. 4.19, F. 4.15 At salvation Christ's spirit joins with our spirit, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. As sinners, we were the above row of verses, but we became the bottom row, dead. F. 2 colon 1, Spirit of God, dark. Spirit, mind. Ephesians 4 verse 18, defiled. Light. Mind. 1 Timothy 1 verse 10, emotions. Soul, heart, will, connect, alive, Titus 3 verse 5, our body is the Lord's, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20, 2 Cor, 4 colon 7, 
John 1 verse 4, F. 5 colon 8, Our spirit is in our mind, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, F. 423. The soul is in the heart, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 verse 7, Body houses spirit, soul and sinful flesh. 5 senses. The body has five senses. The dead sinful flesh resides in the body, but it has been separated from the soul and spirit by the operation of God, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Colossians 2 verses 11 and 12. Both our spirit and soul have a mind. The spirit in our mind communicates the truth of God's word to us to the mind in our soul. When the will of the soul chooses to believe God's word, it goes from the mind in our head into the hard drive of the heart, soul. The emotions of the soul connect with the body and puts the body in motion to do God's will. Sons of God need to be ruled by the mind of Christ, 1 Cor. 2.16, so we can do good works for God. The Three Circles is adaption of a teaching of Pastor Richard Jordan of Shorewood Bible Church in Chicago, Illinois. Chapter 7 Concerning Marriage 7 colon 1 7 Do Benevolence in Marriage 7 colon 8 16 The Unmarried Marriage Between Believers and Unbelievers 7 colon 17 24 Remain in the Place of Your Calling 7 colon 25 40 apostolic advice to the unmarried and their parents 7 colon 1 now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me it is good for a man not to touch a woman 2 nevertheless to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband 3 let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband for the wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. 5. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. 6. But I speak this by permission, and not of commandment. 7. For I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner, and another after that. Having finished six chapters rebuking them for their unspiritual schism, allowance of unjudged sexual sin, and selfish litigations, Paul is ready to answer their questions and give them regulations. He answers them in light of serving the Lord and having rewards at the JSOC. Paul said it is good for a man to avoid intimate relations. However, marriage is God's solution to avoiding fornication. Other reasons for marriage are companionship and affection. Due benevolence is the duty of a husband and a wife to give themselves to intimate relations with one another. The husband's body belongs to the wife and the wife's body to the husband. We are not to practice self-gratification, but gratification or intimate pleasure within the confines of marriage. Paul clearly teaches monogamy between one husband and one wife. Withholding intimate relations is a type of defrauding of the spouse unless done by mutual consent for a short time of prayer and fasting, but then come together again so that Satan cannot tempt either one from seeking. Satisfaction elsewhere. Incontinence means unable to contain themselves. Some at Corinth seem to be looking for an excuse to get a divorce. Furthermore, it was important for husbands to be satisfied at home and not run up to the temple of Aphrodite on top of the mountain overlooking the city of Corinth with its thousand temple prostitutes. Paul says I am telling you this by permission from Christ, not by commandment. Paul wishes that everyone had the gift of celibacy. Paul may have been married at one time since he was probably a member of the Sanhedrin, he cast his vote against the believers in the little flock in Acts 26 verse 10, and marriage was a requirement for that office. But he was now celibate and serving the Lord. Paul says I have the gift of celibacy, but I know that everyone has different gifts. 8 I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I and 9, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn.
10 and unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband, 11 but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. If someone has the desire for intimate relations, let them marry rather than to burn. The Lord gave the instruction to Paul that a wife should not depart from her husband. If she leaves for a while, she should not marry another, but may go back and reconcile with her husband. Paul is permitting not commanding separation. A husband is not to put away his wife. 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord, if any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and should be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. 13. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. 16. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? Husbands and wives of unbelievers should remain with unsaved partners, live in peace, and do their best to win them to Christ. I heard a pastor say that he led his wife to the Lord because he did not presume that she was saved even though she was in the church choir and did many other Christian things. We have to ask our spouses what they are trusting in to get them into heaven. If it is not in Christ alone, then they are not saved. The other spouse and their children are physically sanctified by the believer so in the marriage bed the believer is not joined to a harlot. 616. But if the unbeliever leaves, then the believing spouse is not bound to the marriage in such cases and has a chance for divorce and remarriage. 17. But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. 18. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Remain in the physical condition as far as circumcision as you were in when you were saved. Circumcision is nothing today because the crosswork of Christ is everything, gal. 5 colon 2 dash 6, Abram was uncircumcised when he believed that the Lord would make his descendants as numerous as the stars, Genesis 15 verses 5 and 6. But T afterwards after he and his wife had been in the land for 10 years and Abram was 85 years they lapsed into unbelief and decided to have their baby using her maid Hagar as a surrogate. The Lord did not speak to them for 13 years, but when Abram was 99 years, then the Lord changed his name to Abraham, the father of many nations, and made an everlasting covenant with him and his seed of the promised land, and the token of the covenant on their part was circumcision. The Lord also changed his wife's name from Sarai to Sarah, the mother of many nations. Note that Jehovah ends with all which was inserted into their names. Every man-child was to be circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin when they were eight days old. God said all the servants born in his house and strangers bought with money also need to be circumcised. The man-child that was not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant, Genesis 17 verses 10 to 14. Abraham circumcised all the men of his house and Ishmael, 13 years old, that same day. Circumcision was a sign for Israel to trust in God, not their flesh, like Abraham did when he had Ishmael. From then on, all males in the Jews' homes needed to be circumcised. Proselytes were Gentiles who believed in Israel's God and identified themselves with Israel by being circumcised. Today, Israel is not the preferred nation. The middle wall of partition is down. F. 214. Israel of today is an apostasy not believing in. Their Messiah. After the rapture, God will resume his dealings with Israel. Today, both Jews and Gentiles are saved into the body of Christ by believing Paul's gospel, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. Today to be water baptized or physically circumcised is a sign of unbelief in what God is doing, 117. Our baptism and circumcision are both spiritual and take place the moment we believe, 1213, Colossians 2 verses 9 to 15.
Since we can't feel this, we accept it by faith in what the Bible says. When we identify with Christ's death and resurrection through faith God performed an operation without hands and circumcised or cut the connection between our soul and our body, flesh, freeing us from the power of our flesh. The fleshly nature was rendered dead and powerless, so if the believer sins now he does so by choice. God made us spiritually alive with Christ forgiving us of all our trespasses. He blotted out all the sins that we had committed. He took all the wrong things that we had done against God out of the way and nailed them to the cross. Jesus was victorious on the cross and triumphed over Satan. He openly shamed him and his cohorts with one gigantic costly sacrifice of obedience to the Father demonstrating the manifold wisdom of God. Furthermore, there are no health reasons for being circumcised according to the American College of Pediatrics. In many countries, the men are uncircumcised, except the Jews, and they do not have an increased health problem because of that. Sexual contact and uncleanliness are what causes sexually transmitted disease. Remember that Adam was made perfectly to live forever and he had foreskin. 19. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. Imagine what Paul was up against telling Jews that circumcision is nothing in this dispensation, Acts 21 verse 21. Christ has done everything to save us, so whether a man is circumcised or not, does not matter. We are to obey the commandments Christ gave us through Paul, and to be circumcised was not one of them, 7 10, 14 37. Circumcision was the sign of the Abrahamic covenant. All the covenants belong to Israel, Rom, 9 colon 4. 20 Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. 21 Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it, but if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. 22 For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's freeman, likewise also he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. Believers are also to stay where they are when they were saved as far as their socioeconomic workplace goes. But if you have an opportunity to improve, your workplace take it. If you are a slave do not worry about it, but if you have an opportunity to be free take it. Servants are free in Christ, and free men are his servants. 23 Ye are bought with a price, be not ye the servants of men. 24 Brethren, let every man, wherein he is called, therein abide with God. Paul repeats you are bought with a price, 620, so do not serve men, but serve God. 25 Now concerning virgins I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment, as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. 26 I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress, I say, that it is good for a man so to be. 27 Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. Paul had no specific commandment from Christ concerning virgins, male or female, but gave his judgment since he has obtained mercy from the Lord to be the only man chosen as our apostle and master builder. 310. Let a man remain a virgin due to the present distress, the evil world, Gal. 1 4. Change in dispensation, and the failure of many to follow Paul. If you are married stay that way, if you are unmarried stay that way. 28 But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned, and if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. If a virgin marries they have not sinned. But for the sake of the female Paul says she will have trouble in this life. Marriage brings responsibilities. Women have so much work to do in the home. The woman was to be a corgent with Adam, Gen 1 26 28, but because Eve sinned, the husband rules over the wife. Christ's righteousness upon salvation is greater than the sin of Adam and Eve, Rom. 5. There is still a hierarchy between equals as we will learn in chapter 11. In the kingdom, Christ will rule with his bride, Israel's believers. 29 But this I say, brethren, the time is short, it remaineth, that both they that have wives be as though they had none, 30 And they that weep, as though they wept not, and they that rejoice, as though they rejoiced not, and they that buy, as though they possess not, 31 And they that use this world, as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. 
Time is short because our lifetimes are short. We do not know when we will be raptured, and this world is passing away and will be replaced. 2 Peter 3 verses 7 to 13. Serve God as if you did not have a wife. It is time for those who weep because of widowhood or abandonment to serve God as if they had no sorrow. Those who rejoice, newlyweds, to work as if they did not. Businessmen, do not let your business take you away from working for the Lord. Do not let your possessions possess you. 32. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. 33. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. 34. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Paul would have us without distraction. If you are unmarried, you will care for the things that belong to the Lord, how we can please him. But the married care for the things of the world, how they can please their spouse. 35. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Paul speaks for our own good at the JSOC, not so we will feel trapped, but to let us know that it is more becoming to stay single so we might devote ourselves completely to serving the Lord without distraction. Jesus said something similar, for there are some eunuchs, which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs, which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs, which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Matt 1912. 36. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and need so require, let him do what he will, he sinneth not, let them marry. In that culture it was customary for the father to decide who the daughter should marry. If a father wants his daughter to marry it is not unbecoming, if she has come of age, and finances require it, let him decide what he will do and find her a husband and let them marry which is not a sin. 37 Nevertheless he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will, and hath so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin, doeth well. 38 So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. So the father that gives his virgin in marriage does well, but the father that decides in his heart to take the be responsibility and can afford to provide for his virgin daughter so she can remain single and serve the Lord does. Better. 39 The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. 40 But she is happier if she so abide, after my judgment, and I think also that I have the Spirit of God. Marriage is for life, till death do us part. If her husband dies the wife is free to marry whom she wants, but only to a believer. Two believers each filled with his spirit have harmony, for he will not fight himself. Paul thinks he has the Spirit of God and that the virgin would be happier if she stays single. Chapter 8 The Weaker Brother, Idols, and Our Liberty 8,1-13 Meat Offered to Idols, The Weaker Brother, and Paul's Example. 8,1 Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. While answering their questions regarding meat offered to idols in chapters 8 to 10, Paul addresses the weaker brother principle found in Romans chapter 14 to 15, 3. Chapter 8 think, chapter 9, live, chapter 10, warning. Knowledge was a temporary spiritual gift. Eating meat offered to idols is nothing because the cross work of Christ is everything. This confidence or knowledge can puff up, but Paul is not saying that we should not do all we can to know God and what he says in his word. He prays for believers to have knowledge of God, f. 117, Colossians 1 verse 10. Paul's goal was the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, Phil. 3 8. Because of Paul's ministry many Gentiles turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, 1 Thess. 1 9. Knowledge must be balanced by charity, love. How often does our flesh want to be exalted? 
all the time. It is not about us, it is about what Christ has done. Therefore, we must as Paul says, I die daily, 1531. We must die to ourselves and allow Christ to live in us. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me, Gal. 2.20 The Son had faith that God would raise him from the dead, PSA. 16.10 His love for us constrains us to love God and others. It takes only one millisecond to go from walking in the Spirit to living after the selfish flesh. Paul says, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, 927. All things are lawful for us since we are not under the law, but under grace, Rom. 614. Paul is not forbidding us to go anywhere, but he wants us to make wise decisions about how we use our liberty now that we are washed, sanctified, and justified, 611. We should not stumble the weaker brother whose conscience may think it is wrong to eat that meat. Grace teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, Titus 2 verse 12. I used to be a weaker brother before I learned how to rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Tim 2 15. At that time, I did not eat my favorite. part of my pizza, the sausage, because I was a mixer and thought the Jewish dietary laws somehow pertained to me. I mixed Peter and Paul, law and grace, the things that belong to Israel with those of the body of Christ because I thought that the church, the body of Christ, began in Acts 2. I had not yet learned that the body of Christ began in Acts 9. I did not know that there was more than one church in the Bible. The church in the wilderness, Acts 7 verse 38, the Messianic Judaism Kingdom Church in Matthew 16 colon 16 18, and then the body of Christ, F. 1 22, 23. Acts 10 is an isolated event in which God lets Peter, the head of the twelve apostles, know that he has made a dispensational shift. This was three years after Paul was saved. Using Cornelius, God informed Peter that he had changed dispensations. God was no longer making the distinction between clean, the Jews, and unclean, the Gentiles. Peter did not understand what had happened until Paul told him, Gal. 2 7 9. It was at the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15 that Peter, James, and John were informed that God had postponed his prophetic dealings with the nation of Israel. Since the leaders of Israel rejected their Messiah for the third time in Acts 7 with the stoning of the Holy Ghost filled Stephen and committed the unforgivable blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, God now considers Jews as uncircumcised, Acts 7 verse 51, dot. 2. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. All true knowledge comes from God, not human viewpoint. Man's wisdom is very limited compared to God's wisdom. Knowledge can puff us up, but it is loving to use it to build others up in the faith. Every one of us must be careful not to fall into the temptation of wrong emotive, gal. 6 1 5. 3. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Loving God for what Christ has done is the knowledge that counts. We show God we love him by reading his word. God sees our hearts and knows those who belong to him. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And, let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity, 2 Tim, 2 19, but we cannot tell who is saved by looking at them. So how can we know? By their testimony. If they believe what Christ did, 15 colon 3, 4, without adding to his finished work for their salvation, they are saved, Rom, 4 colon 5. For as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. 5. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many. And lords many, 6. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things, and we by him. There is only one God, the Father, and one Lord Jesus Christ, and we have life by him. Since there is no power in an idol, the meat is not affected in any way. 
There are false gods in heaven and earth, such as Jupiter in Acts 14 verse 12. Satan and his fallen angels are in the second heaven and are behind the creature worship and the people empowered by them. Eve knew that the fallen angels were called gods. Satan offered Adam and Eve a chance to be on his team ye shall be as gods, Genesis 3 verse 5, and they took it. There were many temples for the Greek gods in Corinth. An idol is not a statue of wood, metal, or stone, but the god that is created in the imagination of man's mind, Deuteronomy. For 19, 28, wrong. 1 colon 21 dash 23. God is not who man thinks he is. God of the Bible is who he says he is. Knowledgeable Christians know that there is only one God, the Father who made all things and we in him, f. For colon 6, and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things, f. 3 colon 9, and we by him. We are saved by the cross, f. 2.16, after Paul was saved on the road, not at the cross. 7 Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge, for some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. However, not everyone has the knowledge that the idol is nothing and there is only one true God. Some weaker believers may become fearful and superstitious. Their conscience may bother them because they are not confident that the idol is nothing. If they eat meat offered to idols their conscience can be defiled. In Romans 14 verse 23, Paul says that going against our conscience is sin. Conscience is the internal self-knowledge or judgment of right and wrong. The faculty, power, or principle within us, which decides on the lawfulness or unlawfulness of our own actions and affections, and instantly approves or condemns them, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. The conscience should eventually be replaced by faith in what God said to us rightly divided. 8. But meat commendeth us not to God, for neither, if we eat, are we the better, neither, if we eat not, are we the worse. What we eat, meat offered to idols or pork, or do not eat does not make us more acceptable to God. Colossians 2 verses 20 to 23, what matters is if we have trusted in Christ. Paul clearly says that idols are not real, and that meat offered to idols could not hurt anyone. What we eat has no spiritual effect on us, there is no demonic influence in that. Quality Meat 9. But take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Be careful that our liberty to eat the meat offered to idols with a clear conscience does not stumble those who do not realize that food is not sinful in itself. The Corinthian believer could go up and get the meat at the temple shop and eat it. But what about their weaker brother? Were they concerned with how it would affect him? 10 For if any man see thee which hast knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? We know it does not matter what those who will live in heaven eat. If someone sees you eating food at the temple of Aphrodite, possibly a perversion of the constellation Virgo, he might feel bold and imitate you, but later his conscience might convict him because he is weak in knowledge. Going to the temple is like going into a bar. Interestingly, the Sphinx, half woman and half lion, is a key to understanding the zodiac, Maseroth, Job 38 verse 32. It begins with the virgin's birth of the Redeemer who ends up being the king, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mary is not the mother of God, he always existed, but she is blessed among women to bring forth God's son in a human body, Luke 1 verse 28. Dot. 11 And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish, for whom Christ died. Our knowledge and liberty can embolden a weak brother to defile their conscience, leave the truth and go back to idolatry. For example, it is tragic when someone with an alcohol problem is emboldened to drink because he sees a Christian assert his rights and goes to the sports bar to watch the football game and halftime girly show without thinking how it may affect others. Christ sacrificed himself for him, and we should be able to make a small sacrifice and forego doing certain things so we do not ruin our weak brother's faith. Those who do not understand God's grace for today and Paul's distinctive apostleship are the weaker brothers. 12. But when ye sin so against the brethren, and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. When we sin against a weak believer and wound their conscience, we sin against Christ. Out of love for others, we need to learn to do without some things. 13. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. 
Paul said, If my brother will offend God by copying what I eat and sin against his conscience, then I will avoid eating those things as long as the world stands. Paul would rather go without eating flesh than cause his brother to stumble. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. 1024 A soul is more important than food. Paul has given the Corinthians guidelines to follow. If they had friends that would be stumbled by seeing them eat that prime piece of meat at the temple meat shop, then they should stop going there. The weaker brother principle applies in many areas in our lives, what we eat and drink, the movies or plays we watch, the books we read, the music we listen to, etc. God said that his will is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim 2 colon 4, therefore, the goal is to save souls, 1033, and help weak brethren to understand Paul's distinctive ministry to the heaven-bound body of Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has been patient with us and we must be patient with all who will listen to us because we used to be mixers in the past. The greatest need of the church today is to not only be biblical but also dispensational or they will never understand the Bible. God cares about our conduct and how we treat others, especially those in the body, Gal. 610, God has called us to live on a higher plane above sin and self. As we will see in chapter 13, charity is what should motivate our Christian conduct, and moment by moment we must make wise selfless decisions for His glory. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 17 For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Ephesians 1 verse 10 That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Ephesians 3 verse 2 If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Lord, Colossians 1 verse 25 Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. The word dispensation four times in the KJV.